It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day, and it's Sunday fun day. It is also Father's Day, so a happy, happy Daddy's Day to all of you dads of humans, as well as those of you that are plant dads. Um, it's also Juneteenth, so, I mean, we're just celebrating, and Pride Month, so it's just a really, really special time of year, and I have an extremely special plant that I, I, I'm so excited to share it with you. You guys are going to plot when you see this thing. Um, but first, you may be wondering, it's Father's Day, where's Greg? You know what Greg wanted for Father's Day? Some damn peace and quiet. So he is in the house, in the guest room, with the fan on, his mouth wide open, dead to the world. Like, not literally, but figuratively, sound asleep, uh, having his the Father's Day of his dreams. So Hannah is helping me out today by shooting our tip. So are you, are you ready? Okay. Oh my God. Look. Ooh. Ah, oh, can you even just take it in people? This is an anomaly if I ever saw one. This is a crested Pacopodium lamerii right? You know, I'm moving or we have to leave our house and our garden after 14 years. And I don't think I'm going to be able to take my gay eye in the back. So this little Lemary eye will make my heart happy. So at least I'll have a pack of podium when we go. And, you know, you've asked me so many times, why do plants do this? What makes a plant crest? And you know, there are theories. Nobody really knows definitively why. Some say it is an anomaly. Some say it's genetic. Other people say there was damage to the meristem tissue of the plant that caused it uh, to do this, that this is a mistake or an accident. Some say it's a disease. Hey, if it's a disease, you know, I don't want the cure because I think it's absolutely fantastic. This is just so interesting and I cannot wait, you know, to see what what it's going to do and how it's going to grow and how it's going to morph. So I had a little um, gymnocalaceum in this patina pot and I moved the gymno into another place so that I could put the pacopodium in because I thought that this was the perfect, perfect round squatty pot for this plant. Um, hopefully, okay. Can you move it up, like, this yeah, hopefully it's not too substantially rooted in here yeah it's hard to tell too which is going to be i think what do you guys think okay i think this might be the front yeah right a little more dramatic okay so remember whether it's crested or not Pacopodiums are a tender plant. They are not frost hardy. Uh, they like mild Mediterranean temperatures. So in the winter, if it drops much below 50 degrees, this girl's going to drop all of her leaves and just pout until it warms up again. So I've had some of you contact me in a panic when your Pacopodium loses its leaves. Now, you know, particularly if it's winter, I'm like, don't worry about it. Just make sure that you don't water uh, when a plant defoliates because what that indicates is that it's gone into, gone into uh, kind of like hibernation. It's gone dormant. So if you water when a plant isn't actively growing, you could rot it out. Okay. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. Okay. Woohoo! We've got some roots, but not excessively so. So now I'm just going to kind of gauge what's going on here. This, this soil that I have in the bucket, I actually took out of the pot that I had the, um, uh, the cactus in because it's got everything. It's got vermiculite. It's got perlite. It's got creva. It's got lava rock. It's just got all kinds of crap in it. So I know it'll be uh, real porous and it won't hold a bunch of water. So I'm gonna pour some of this in there. It's also very, very dry, which is the way I want it, because I wanna give my plant a chance to acclimate to its new home uh, before, before I water it. 
I think that this spot in the courtyard is going to be the, the spot because it is pretty pretty shady here in the hottest part of the day. So I think she'll be very happy here. Okay, let's see if I eyeballed this correctly. Hey, sweetheart. Okay. Which was the front? I think the other one. This way? No. no, this way. Okay. I think I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, we, can just flip we can always turn it around. That's right. Not a problem. All right. Now I want, I know you, I'm always telling you guys, oh, slightly right or left of center. But in this case, I want it pretty much dead center, right? Yeah. So I'm going to need to move this over there okay tomorrow we are going to pacific beach remember a few weeks ago when i did the video um, on the pacific beach project and i talked about how we'd done the installation three years ago and it just everything went crazy so overgrown also um, our beloved client is something of a collector so she's added a lot to to the plants as well over the last three years this will be the first time team dfs has had a chance to get in there and it's going to be something to behold so you are not not going to want to miss this this uh, series we will be there in pacific beach tomorrow monday tuesday wednesday and possibly thursday depending on how it goes. This isn't really a maintenance that we're gonna be doing, it's more of a restoration. Because there are a lot of plants that we're just gonna to have to remove because they have absolutely outgrown their space. Uh, other things we can size and put back. She has some non-succulent plants that she has already taken out that's left gaping holes in the landscape that we're gonna to have to decide what to fill it with. She was the client, too, she and her husband, that went with the basalt top dressing. Uh, really cool black rock, kind of like chips. Some of you said it looked like asphalt. <laughs> you know, art is subjective, isn't it? It's not for everybody, but I think it's gorgeous. But anywho, you know, I'm just kind of hoping, well, I'm not kind of hoping, I am hoping that we can find that rock. Um... I was thinking about that today before I set up for this video. Gosh, I hope we can find the basalt. So we might have to get super creative with top dressing at this restoration as well. There's just going to be no end, no end to it, no end to challenges. How does that look, Hannah? Oh my God. So gorgeous. I am just so ecstatic about this. Um, I was at Waterwise pulling plants for our Mira Mesa job. And Carly, who is kind of the boss, she's the one that is in charge of basically everything there. Uh, I love Carly. Uh, she mentioned that she had this really cool plant down in the North Slope, and it's, it was a crested pack of podium in a 15-gallon squat. Would I be in? She couldn't even finish the sentence would I be interested because I was all over it. I'm like, I, I don't even need to see it. Just, yes, yeah, sign me up. So here she is. And you know, I've always told you, you know, that I'm a dealer, I don't use. Um, but when I find something as spectacular as this, I am not gonna walk away from it. Okay. Ugh. How are you precious? Okay, clean all the dirt off the base, get that little leaf out of there. Wow. This is just absolute perfection. So it's looking, looking like we're gonna be moving to Vista, you guys. And for those of you that aren't in San Diego County, we're still gonna be in San Diego, but up in what's called North County. Right now we're in South County. Vista is a fantastic place to grow succulents. Just phenomenal. I've done a lot of work up there uh, it's much closer to my nurseries uh, and my rock yards. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, keep a good thought that that works out for us. 
and we'll keep you posted. Okay, are we done? No, of course not. We have to top dress. I have a lot of um, a lot of plants here on the courtyard with various types of top dressing, but most I've used the little black. Um, what is this? Little black, just a little black, like um, five eighths um, little pebble. Uh, and I wanted to do something that would contrast this pot. You know, it wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, this is called patina where you know where it kind of is mottled and the and the paint has come off a bit this pot is really 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 old i got a um i actually got my aloe plicatillus in this pot which was gifted to me by a follower many years ago it had been uh, a member of her family's it's a generational plant a legacy plant and um, it's the one that I have in the back out by the fountain. So, anywho, yeah, it got too big for this pot, so I put, you know, the calasium in here. But now, this pack of podium. I picked Cali Gold. I thought this would really pop. I, I want all of the attention on the plant. It's like the sand at the beach. Yeah, Hannah says this is kind of like the sand at the beach, and, and this is like a whale's tail. Yeah, a seashell would have been neat, too, if I'd had any. But, yes, I'm real happy with this Cali Gold. I'm not going to do any fire glass or anything flashy or fussy. Because, um, again, the pot, you have to take into consideration your landscape and the borrowed landscape. So this pot, you know, is kind of old and worn and shabby chic. Um, so I'm just going to go with that and do just my basic Cali Gold. And then I pulled a couple of interesting pieces of rock. This was a, um, this broke off of some Grand Canyon onyx. Uh, and I'll stage that in here. Just for funsies. Okay. All right. When uh, we still got some more walkabout Wednesdays in the can, so don't worry, guys. We won't be moving until probably mid-August, and this is just uh, mid-June. So we've still got a couple of months here on the property. I will take you along as I make decisions. Um, I have already started uh, digging up some of my plants and gifting them to clients. So, you know, you'll be along on the process. I'll show you on, you know, on the Wednesdays what I've dug out and what I'm, you know, where, where my head is with all of it. Uh, I'm, I have, you know, the grieving process has definitely started. Some, sometimes I feel really cavalier about all of it, and I'm really excited to start a new garden. Uh, sometimes I get really sad and panicky, um, and I don't know how I'm going to leave a single plant behind. Uh, so it's just a mixed bag, and I appreciate you guys being on the journey with me. So happy Sunday fun day, happy Juneteenth, Juneteenth, uh, happy Father's Day, happy Pride Month. Oh my goodness. Remember, if you can find the shop, be sure and purchase um, stuff in it because all of the proceeds from anything, whether it's uh, Pride related or whether it's OG shirts or anything that, that's up in there, all of the proceeds go to the Trevor Project this month. So uh, thank you all so, so much for your support, for your love, for your comments. And I will catch you tomorrow in Pacific Beach. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Sunday Fun Day and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.